Hi, I'm Peter Williams, uh, founder and CEO of Ace Portal, the hub for private placements. Uh, the next series uh, in our video series is about the type of transaction in the private market, whether the transaction is a primary or a secondary transaction, and then whether it's marketed uh, or, frankly, a trade. And it's important to understand each of these, um, and you're looking at making investments in the private market. So we'll start at the top left. Uh, primary uh, issuance of securities would basically be new securities. Uh, they're sold by the company, which in this case would be referred to as the issuer of those securities. And because the company is issuing um, the securities, the dollars, the cash that's raised, goes to a company. So this would be an example if the company wanted to raise 10 or $20 million to build a new production facility, uh, that would be considered a primary issuance. A secondary uh, issuance for trade uh, would basically be a purchase of existing securities. So these would be securities, uh, maybe shares, that are already issued to an owner of those shares, and those shares are then sold by that owner to a new owner. Um, in this case, the dollars go from one seller, uh, sorry, from the buyer to the seller of those securities. The company doesn't get anything um, out of that. So even if um, someone was to buy $10 million of shares in a secondary trade, uh, that $10 million does not go to the company, the company's raising the money in that transaction. The next series is you know, marketed versus a trade. So a marketed transaction is just that. Um, typically the company, uh, it's typically a, a, a primary, although you can have some secondary shares as well. So if a company is looking to raise, again, $20 million to build a facility, at the same time some of the family members that own that company uh, want to sell some of their shares, it could be a mix of primary and secondary. Um, typically they'll prepare information, typically an offering memorandum or a management presentation, documents that investors can review to determine if they want to make an investment in that company. Um, an IPO or a private placement would typically be examples of a marketed transaction. Typical but not required, a marketed transaction would hire, uh, the firm would hire an investment bank. That's very important. Uh, the investment bank would come in uh, and do the background due diligence on the company. They'd prepare all the materials, the private placement memorandum or, or the documents. Uh, they'd ensure compliance with all the securities regulations um, and close the transaction out. And that's very, very important. We'll get into that uh, a little bit later. A trade, on the other hand, versus a marketed deal would basically be, you know, the best example would be you go on Charles Schwab and you buy, you know, 100 shares of GE. That's a secondary trade. You have access to the same information that every other public investor has access to, um, and you make a decision whether you think it's a good investment or not and you buy and sell those securities from other owners of those securities, not from the company itself. So in a public context, again, you all, in theory, have access to equal information. In a private trade, do you have access to equal information? That's a big uh, question. There are some companies out there trying to increase liquidity for secondary shares of private companies, but typically it's a former employee of that company selling shares uh, to someone who doesn't have the same level of information uh, when making that trade. So you're kind of, one party would typically be at an advantage and one party would be at a disadvantage. So, you know, the moral of the story, when playing in the private market space, you need to be very, very cautious um, for some of the reasons we outlined. Uh, you know, typically if a firm has hired an investment bank, uh, you're going to probably see the material prepared you know, in a very different way than if the company was to issue it directly. And a lot of these crowdfunding sites out there uh, what they're trying to do is have the issuer, a company that's seeking to raise the capital, go direct to an investor with really very little interaction in between. And so in theory, there's you know, potentially incentive for uh, the company to portray themselves in the best light without an independent third party reviewing that information at all. And it's just something to, uh, to be cautious about. And we'll get to that in kind of the next uh, clip. Thanks.